Well, obviously, uh, you know, good game here tonight. Uh, it's good to see our kids come out from the get-go and uh, have focus, obviously, after last week's game. And, uh, you know, that's a compliment to them and our coaching staff having these guys ready to play. You know, early in the week, we had good practices, so I felt good about it. Just wanted to see the result, uh, obviously, on game day. And, uh, you know, we brought in uh, Reverend Lewis Macklin uh, on Friday night for our chapel service. And, he brought up an interesting point, you know. He said that, uh, you know, we're on assignment. And, uh, you know, we're on assignment from the man upstairs. We're on assignment for the community. We're on assignment for this university. We're on assignment for this program. And our assignment is, is to be 1-0 and every week. And, uh, you know, kind of put things in perspective a little bit. And, you know, uh, obviously when we do well, I think it's a positive thing for our community. We all know that we play for Youngstown, and uh, we're just excited to get a win there tonight, get an opportunity to play a lot of guys, see what guys can do, see what kind of depth we have, um, you know, see who performs. Uh, it's always interesting to see when a second or a third team guy that gets in there that may not get as many reps as the one does, how he performs uh, executing uh, what the one's expected to do. And uh, I was encouraged by some of the things I saw with some of our young people. And uh, you know, hopefully those guys will continue to grow. And we always tell those guys you're, you're always one play away from being in the ball game. And we all know how important every game is around here. So I'm open for questions. Coach, talk a little bit about the offense. It looked like once again they, you know, they played well and came through. And you said they, I mean, came out from the start and uh, no lag at all. Well, they came out and executed, and uh, that's you know what we expect to do. We have a chance to be special, and you know we have to continue to keep those guys working, keep them humble, keep them hungry, and we have to continue to be creative uh, with plays so we can uh, continue to try to stress the defense. You know, uh, every week. I think your first job of your tenure right here. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I'm, not a, so we're I'm not a stat guy, so <laughs> you guys like to talk about the past a lot. You guys would know better than I do. Good to see that from your defense coach. That they yeah, had. it was. It was good. You know, I was encouraged by it. Uh, I felt like we had control of the game for the most part. You know, they had the time of possession on us, to kind of keep playing keep away there for a while. But uh, you know, I'm just encouraged by seeing how many players that we played on defense. Uh, we were able to still go out there and execute and tackle people and make some plays. And you know, at one point I looked out there, we had two 18 year old kids playing linebacker for us. You know. Uh, Cappy and, and Terry Johnson, you know, you saw those guys running around and making a bunch of plays. They're uh, they're explosive football players, and they got a bright future. Coach, in games like this, when you only get half out of your starters, how do you go into Northern Iowa in two weeks, figuring that your team's going to stay game ready for four quarters? I think the key word you said there is Northern Iowa. In two weeks, you know, uh, we're not worried about Northern Iowa right now. Uh, we're worried about Albany. Uh, Albany's a playoff team. They've been there before, and uh, they're going to come rolling in here, and they're going to play with a chip on their shoulder. And they're going, you know, they had a nice win today. And they're going to come in here to the Ice Castle and be excited to play us. And you know, we're going to have to come out and play well. Mm -hmm. um, Bam was a game time decision against, but Tra Travis played pretty well. Yeah, we played Travis. You know, uh, Bam had a, a slight cut in his foot, and you know, he didn't practice during the week. And, if you don't practice, we're not going to play you on game day. Let me talk about Travis stepping up. I think 10 tackles. Oh, Tra too. Travis was flying around. I mean, you guys can see that uh, he's, he's a great kid. Uh, I, really, I really appreciate the way he's handled uh, himself thus far. You know, I think that takes a lot of maturity for a guy like him that uh, maybe didn't have the camp that he wanted to have. Bam had a strong camp, you know, and it's not always uh, easy to see a guy come in there and maybe get the start, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, in the pit game, uh, you know, Travis ended up having more reps than Bam when it was all said and done. But uh, I appreciate his maturity, and you know, football is important to him, and he's a good kid. And uh, you know, it's hard to believe he's only a sophomore. For the Warren folks, talk about the play at Demond getting his first. Didn't you it was good to get Demond in there. Uh, I kind of got him a little bit there on. The, one of his touchdown runs about not just getting his pads down. I mean, DeMond is an explosive football player. Uh, he worked on Scott's team with me last year against the defense, and 
He's very explosive. Uh, anytime he touches the ball, he has the ability to go house. And uh, just got to continue to keep developing, learn his protections. Uh, he's got to continue just to learn the hand signals, everything from the sideline, and just get more comfortable. But it was good to get him in the game. And he's another guy, you know, he's, he's just a freshman. Maybe a concern coming out of this game today would be you wanted to come out healthy. Is everything healthy? I think everybody's pretty healthy. You know, I got concerned about one of the late shots there that Travis took uh, on one of the broken plays there. And Marcel Caber might have banged his shoulder a little bit, but that was kind of a nagging injury from camp there. But, uh, you know, those guys uh, just got to get back in there and get treatment, get themselves doubled up, and should be good to go. Are you okay? All right. one, one other question. Yes, I saw Andrew Rodovich out there a lot, a lot today. Was it just to give him a little more playing time, or just to help be uh, line out a little bit more? Well, you know what, uh, Andrew is a guy that when we put Kyle Bryant in at left tackle, mm -hmm. we're able to move him to left guard and play for Lamar Mady, uh, or go in and play right guard or right tackle. So, Rodovich actually is a guy that could play all five positions. But primarily left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. That's a that's a really good observation by you. I'm sure, most people wouldn't realize that.